Now we're gonna do one more example on the back. The first thing we need to do is label the opposite adjacent hypotenuse. So don't forget your hypotenuse, this always points to it. So this side is my hypotenuse. Then we need to find our opposite. So since we're given the 25 degree angle, right across from it is my opposite side. And then we find our adjacent side. And this is the side that doesn't have anything. So this is adjacent. Now that we have that, we need to figure out which function we are using. So this has opposite and then we're trying to find adjacent. So out of your SOHCAHTOA, which one uses opposite and adjacent? And that would be tangent. So it would be tangent of an angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. So that means that we're gonna take the tangent of 25 and it would be equal to opposite is 20 over adjacent, which is x. And this is the more difficult problem to solve. Um, we need to solve for x, but currently x is in the denominator and we need to get it out of the denominator. So being the denominator is the same thing as dividing. So we're gonna multiply both sides by x, which gets rid of x out of the den denominator and moves it over to the left. But now we need to get the tangent of 25 away from x. So we divide both sides by the tangent of 25 to get rid of it. So this one cancels and x is 20 divided by the tangent of 25. And we can put that into our calculator. Um, now for those of you who can see it very, very easily, um, an easy way is anytime that you have x in a denominator, what really happens is that x and the tangent of 25 flip-flop. So if you look, it was 20 divided by x, and now it's 20 divided by the tangent of 25. Um, so that's one way to think about it. The problem is many students do the exact same thing when x is in the numerator, which is not the right way to do it. So if you think that you can remember it, feel free. But if you think you're gonna mess it up on the other problems, like the first example that I did with you, um, then please don't do it that way and actually work it out. So let's put 20 divided by the tangent of 25 in the calculator. And that gives us 42.89. And this one, we don't have units. So we're just gonna leave it as 42.89 and we are done. So those are two examples of solving for a side, but there are also problems where you're going to have to solve for an angle. So here's an example of that. So here's an example of finding the angle and you still follow the exact same steps. It's just the way that you're going to solve it and the way you put it in the calculator is a little bit different. Um, so still label your opposite adjacent and, and hypotenuse. And our 90 degree angle points to our hypotenuse. Our opposite side is always across from our angle. And our adjacent side is the one that's left, which is also right next to our x. So now that we have that, we need to identify our function. And we are given an opposite side and an adjacent side. So look at SOHCAHTOA. And which one has opposite and adjacent? It's tangent. So set up your um, example where it's the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite over adjacent. So fill it in, tangent, and we don't know what that angle is, so it's gonna be x right now. And then my opposite side is 55, and my adjacent side is 48. So what we do now is you actually take the inverse of that. So it just looks like this if you're solving for x, you take the tangent and then it's to a negative one. And instead of an angle being on the inside, it'll now be the fraction like this. So anytime you're solving for an angle, this is what you'll use. And to use that, you press second and then the function you need. So in this case, we will press second and then the tangent button. So second, tangent, and that's how you get the little negative one. So now I just put 55 divided by 48. 
It's actually one of the easier problems to solve for because you don't have to solve the equation. You just press second, the function button that you're using, and the fraction that you found. And since we are finding a degree, we round to the closest whole number. So sides, it's to the closest hundredth because you can measure in hundredths. But for degrees, you can't really measure in, um, in decimals of degrees. Um, you really can only measure in whole degrees. So since it's 48.8, this is going to be 49 degrees. Now we're going to look at an example word problem. The only difference with word problems as to all the other problems we have been working is you add an extra step in the beginning and it's the same as every other step that I've given you for every word problem. Draw a picture if one is not given to you. So this says, Tom is skydiving and is trying to land directly on a bullseye. If the ground is at an angle of depression of 28 degrees and Tom is 17 meters above the ground, how far is he from the bullseye? So um, an angle of depression just means that you're looking down onto something. So what is the angle that you're looking down at it? So here's an example picture of what's going on. So I need to fill in the information with this picture. So what is happening is you have Tom here who is skydiving. This bullseye is down below him and diagonally also in front of him. So it's below him and in front of him. Um, what this dotted line in is, is his line of sight. So he, if he was looking directly in front of him. And then what this part of the triangle is how far he would have to get to the bullseye. So this is what we're trying to find is how far away from that bullseye he actually is. And then it says he is 17 meters above the ground. So directly above the ground is this part of the triangle. So that's 17 meters. And um, then we are given the angle of depression. So whenever you're talking about the angle of depression, it's the angle that you're looking down on to an object. So it's really this angle right here. So where your line of sight is and then how far down you're looking off of your line of sight. Um, but if you go back to, I believe it was um, unit four when we talked about parallel lines and transversals, um, his line of sight is a parallel line to the ground. So that means, and then this uh, hypotenuse is the transversal. So the angle of depression and this angle right here are alternate interior and it also helps if we have the angle measure inside of our right triangle. It's very hard to use trig functions if it's not. So this part of the triangle will be 28 degrees because that's his angle of depression. Um, his angle of depression is the same as this angle right here and we actually call that an angle of elevation, which I will show you in the next problem. I'll do one of those problems too. And there was a problem similar to this one and the next one I'm going to show you on your test. That way it'll help you a little bit more. Um, but I do have examples of these if you need to do some extra problems too. So the steps are essentially the same. Identify all the parts of your triangle. So our hypotenuse is our x. Our opposite is what's across from our angle, which is 17 meters. And then you can find your adjacent. You don't need to because we don't need to use it for this problem, but it's right there. Um, now we need to identify our function and we are given hypotenuse and opposite. So let's look at Sokotoa. And which one uses opposite and hypotenuse? that sign. So you will take the sine of any angle and that's equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of our angle is 28 is equal to opposite which is 17 over the hypotenuse which is our x. Now remember the trick is if you have x to the denominator you just flip flop these. But let's pretend I can't do that and I'm going to solve this problem. You multiply both sides times x. This cancels and you have x times the sine of 28 is equal to 17. Divide both sides by the sine of 28.
And let's put 17 divided by the sine of 28 in our calculator. And that gives me 40.22, but after this last two is a five, so 40.23. And these are meters. And that's our answer. So let's do one more word problem and then we will be done. So this problem says, what is the angle of elevation of the sun if a 10 foot flagpole casts a 15 foot shadow? The first thing you need to do is draw the situation. So this is what it looks like. An angle of elevation just means what is the angle looking up? So this is the angle that we're going to be looking for. Um, and that's the one that we don't know. It says that the flagpole is 10 feet. And then it says that its shadow is 15 feet. Next, we need to identify our offset adjacent and the hypotenuse. So our hypotenuse is there. Our opposite is across from the angle. And then our adjacent is the one that's left or right next to the angle. Now we need to identify the function that we're going to use. We are given opposite and adjacent. So let's look at Sokotoa. Which one uses opposite and adjacent? That's tangent. So tangent of an angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. Tangent, and we don't know what our angle is, is equal to opposite, which is 10, over adjacent, which is 15. And since we're looking for an angle, you um, press the second tan to get that little negative one, and then your fraction. Second tangent 10 divided by 15. That means that our angle is 34 degrees. Make sure you go to the bottom and write your summary and notes are done.